This is the strangest country in all of Europe. It's the birthplace of wine, Joseph Stalin, and the Caucasian race. With over 2,500 years of history, with the most interesting food, dance, buildings, and nature. And the craziest thing is, most people don't even know it's a part of Europe. With a destination as unique as this, Ali and I had to explore. So, as usual, we rented a car and spent six days exploring this overlooked country. What we found absolutely shocked us, and it might surprise you too. White power, um, swastika. So join us on this wild adventure. Welcome to Georgia. Our journey begins in the capital city of Tbilisi. We are here at Narikala Fortress. And as you can see, with this beautiful yeah. view of the city of Tbilisi here, and Tbilisi actually means warm water when it's translated, and it was named after the sulfuric river that runs right behind this yeah. fortress. So literally, right here, this very area is where Tbilisi started almost 4,000 years ago, which is crazy. I, know. I had no idea Tbilisi was that old, yeah. Georgia was that old, and this fortress specifically was built in the fourth century by the Persians. Definitely an iconic landmark and with a beautiful view. So I'm super excited to start exploring the city. Our goal today is to go to all of Tbilisi's top sites and along the way give you our honest first impressions of the yes. city after visiting hundreds of cities in the past and see how this compares. Is it dangerous? Is it safe? All the questions that you have, we also have. So let's explore. cool is this from the fortress you can actually see snow-capped mountains there in the distance I actually think we're gonna be going there in a couple of weeks if I'm not mistaken then Russia is actually on the other side of those mountains but how beautiful is that destination, which are the ancient Tbilisi sulfur baths. Gorgeous Persian um, exterior tile, really, really beautiful. But once we come in, uh, we booked a room basically for like 30 bucks, yeah. I think, and booked a room online, came in for our appointment. They took us down to this corridor that you see here, and there's all these different rooms, and we're at room uh, number eight here. So yeah, let's go check it out. Steamy, yeah, super echoey too. Yeah. Super echoey. Oh my gosh. You got instantly hot. Uh, a little bit scary. <laughs> but it's kind of cool. So they have like this front area that you have your your sink and I a guess, bench over here. Yeah, a little bench so you can leave your things. Toilet. I'm gonna need that. You never need to leave the room. <laughs> and I guess this is where the magic happens. Oh my gosh, oh. so steamy. Oh my gosh, smells like hard boiled eggs. <laughs> but let's try it out. Wow, that was super interesting. <laughs> Yeah, when you come in, they tell you that you shouldn't stay in the bath for longer than 15 minutes, but or you could start getting dizzy or like lightheaded and did not take that long for me at all. Like a few minutes, I'm like, okay, I need to go. Yeah, I could only stay in there for I don't, four minutes max yeah. and then go out, get the cold shower, go back yes. in. Yes. But after, obviously now, I feel great. Yeah. Like I really feel amazing. I so. felt a little bit out of it afterwards. Yeah, you like know, lightheaded. Like lightheaded, yeah. yeah. But, but now, it, yeah, now I feel more energetic. 
Yeah. That's no, but I definitely, if you're coming to Tbilisi, I, it's definitely a cool thing to do. Yes, and they have different rooms. So if you have a bigger group, they have different types of room. You can order things to drink and stuff. So super interesting. But now we actually just a few minute walk away. We made our way to Maiden Bazaar. And this has been here since the 1100s. And I, <laughs> it looks like it. I know, yeah, but it's, it's so cool. I'm super, yeah. super curious to see everything yeah, that they're selling. I have to say, here. so far, like, first impressions of Lisa does not feel like Europe at all. No. Um, there's, well, no, I shouldn't say at all. It feels European, but very Arabic. Yes. Like, I mean, I it does the, remind me of Turkey a bit. Yeah. Of it. Of yeah. it reminds me very much like, <laughs> like Turkey, if you remember from our other videos. Yes. Way more than Europe, but. um Really cool though. We're super excited to check everything out. Yeah, so let's go. Let's go. All right, guys, look at this. This is the sketchiest entrance to a restaurant I have ever seen. Look, like. I didn't even see it with the sign. Yeah, no, there's a sign, and there's some lights on in here. Look at this. Maybe that's our table. Look how, look, this is like a horror movie. That's okay. Broken. I feel like this place was bombed. Okay, this is very nice. Look at that. some more authentic Georgian food. So what I have is some chiji biji, yes. which to me looks like this Georgian menemen. It's like scrambled yeah. egg with tomato, with cheese. Looks great. And yeah, and what I got was some sirniki, which are these cottage cheese pancakes that look almost like donuts and they smell amazing. Yeah, smell really good. Um, and to drink, I got some Georgian fruit tea that also smell amazing, so really excited yeah. to try that. And of that. course, here in Georgia, the birthplace of wine, literally, of course, had to get some wine. Here in Tbilisi, so far, we've seen so many different, uh, what do you call it, wine shops, yes. wine everywhere. It seems Tours like a really big here. part of this culture, yeah. for sure. So I asked, like, what's the most traditional? And it's this amber wine that you see here in these big clay pots yeah, to give it more of like- traditional pots that they've been using for Yeah, for like hundreds over the thousands of years. Yeah. Everything looks great, so let's dive in. Very interesting, the consistency. It's like crusty in the outside and mushy fluffy in the inside kind of like a biscuit a little bit but sweet love it and i love the combination of flavors with the yogurt and the nuts amazing there we go look at that so i got a little bit of that what is it called again so as you can see got a little bit of that shiji biji nice and warm putting it on some of that bread That's brunch food. That is good. I love the cheese. That's like for me, cheese, a little bit of that parsley, adds a little bit of brightness. Super hearty, but still like, love it. Something that we've instantly noticed here in Tbilisi, while there are so many beautiful, like absolutely breathtaking destinations and spots, right next to them are places like these, just abandoned, rundown, and I've never seen a city 
with so much graffiti in my life. Except maybe Buenos Aires or Santiago, Chile, maybe. No, this has more. But this is even more. Yeah, I've yeah. never seen so much graffiti and just, well, crappy graffiti and really bad graffiti. We've seen a lot of racist symbols, yeah. white power, um, swastika, um, other stuff that, I don't know. Have to do with like Russia, Ukraine. Well, there's also that as well. Yeah, which is a whole other story like F Russia and all that, which I guess to an extent I understand. Oh. And we had a friend who actually visited Tbilisi and he's ethnically Asian without giving too many details away. He came, um, he had people giving him dirty looks, following him and someone even threw a water bottle at him. Yeah. Not really sure if that was COVID related. Regardless, that's unacceptable behavior. And he was like, yeah, no, definitely, definitely racist intentions. So obviously we can't exactly speak to that. No yeah. one has really been, seemed to be obviously racist toward us at all. Right. Even it, me being an American or anything, doesn't seem like any problems. It's oh, just so unfortunate. Yeah. And it's definitely something we did not expect out of Georgia. Like, I don't know. But still overall, uh, really good vibes so far in the city, really beautiful as a whole, and really excited to see more. Trinity Cathedral here in Tbilisi. And as you can see, absolutely beautiful, majestic, yeah. one of the most well-known landmarks here for good reason. Yeah. And as you can see, it's a very distinctive Georgian style from some of the other buildings that we've seen today, which is really, really cool. Yeah, and it's perfect at golden hour, especially with that golden covered dome beautiful really magical not just like the view here but also the view of the city around really really beautiful just yeah a lot of really beautiful places here in Tbilisi yeah so now we're just going to enjoy our time here we're hiding I'm just kidding, we're here at Hyde Restaurant back near the Maiden Bazaar and we have an absolute Georgian feast before us. So here we have some uh, Georgian kachapuri, the single food that we've been wanting to try since we touched down here in Georgia. I'm so excited to try it tonight. I uh, got some salad as well as some kinkali, uh, basically these big Georgian dumplings and of course some more Georgian wine as well. Everything looks amazing, but there's a proper way to eat this. You use this piece of bread as well as the bread around the edges to eat the filling. So let's try. Very cheesy. Oh my god. Mm. So good. Definitely not good for my heart. <laughs> like you can taste the butter and like the really rich cheese. Pretty salty as well, like saltier than maybe most of us are used to, but very good. And the bread is so soft, perfectly baked. I'm a fan. Okay, so these Georgian dumplings are called hinkali. Hinkali. I'm just gonna call it kinkali, it's easier. You take them by the stem here, upside down. And then, I'm gonna try to do this, then you kind of uh, drink the um, this soup or sauce out of it, so. Is it right? <laughs> That's really good soup. That wasn't expecting, That's really good. You can kind of already see a little bit of the meat. I think it's like pork and beef filling. And what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take some of this Georgian like sour cream and spices and put it in there. And we're gonna give it a try. <laughs> mm. Mm. That is good. Super comforting. Like a, it's weird, like a, like a hearty dumpling, like a hearty Chinese dumpling. Obviously pretty similar, but this is, very, very good. I give this a 10 out of 10, for sure. This and, is awesome. And they're huge too. You would think they're like appetizers. Appetizer yeah, they're big dumplings, by the way. And we got like 10 of them, so. All this for 35 bucks? Not bad. 
It's day two, and we are here in the heart of the Cajeti wine region. Specifically, we're here at the City of Love, also known as the Love of City by some of the locals, uh, called Signagi, which is this old town atop this hill that overlooks the... The Alazani Valley. Beautiful views already as we were driving in. Oh yeah, absolutely. And our plan is to kind of explore the city, obviously sample some wine here in the region, see some other iconic sites, and share our experiences with you. Now, let's explore. How does it look? Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're climbing up this tower uh, to try to get a better view of the city. Look at this, super sketchy in here. Like all these floorboards are breaking. I just heard someone break uh, one of these here like in a second ago. And it's pretty dimly lit, so yeah, if you are going up any of these towers, watch out. And Allie made it. Yay. <laughs> Check this out. Beautiful view of the wine valley. And there's actually four kilometers of this old wall that protected the city for centuries. Super beautiful. And what's so cool is right over here in this direction, we have the border of Azerbaijan not far away at all. It's actually closer than our hotel. And then over in this direction, you can't really see it because of the clouds, but there's a mountain range that actually divides Georgia from Russia. So we have the Azerbaijan and Russian border right here in the Kakheti region. Um, super cool. So if you go around Tbilisi or here in Kakheti, all around you see this snack hanging. And we don't know the day, but this is a very typical kind of snack or dessert here in Georgia. And what it is are walnuts covered in this grape with honey mixture, kind of like a jelly. So nuts with jelly and a tongue, and you just kind of go at it and eat it off of the string. So we're gonna give it a try. Mm. Ooh, a little bit sweet, like just enough sweetness. It's very good. I really, really like it though. I give this a eight out of 10. And the kind woman here who doesn't want to be filmed uh, showed us all the different kinds of chorchela here, which is the name. And as you can see, we already have the one here made of a red wine grape that we already dug into. Here we have kiwi and pomegranate, which are much more sweet, but not traditional. Here's mostly made with honey in the middle with that bright kind of color. And then over here is another type of grape variety. So obviously all different kinds to choose from. Obviously we really love the one that we chose, uh, but really cool food, culture, history here in Georgia. I'm so blown away by everything. Now let's taste some more. now here at Cavrelli Wine Cave, which is a top rated kind of winery here in the Fajeti region. So we showed up and got rushed into this tour. Uh, it was like 13 bucks for two people. And basically what this includes is a tour of the wine cave, some history and two wine tastings of traditional Georgian wine. Yeah. Because wine was actually created here 8,000 years ago. Oh, I know, oh my God, yeah. I had no idea. And using some of the similar, I think, grape varieties and techniques that they use 8,000 years ago, we're gonna kind of sample yeah. some similar ish. This is like with that clay, that big clay Exactly, yeah, what makes Georgian wine traditional is number one, obviously the grapes that are used here native to the region, but then also this kind of big clay or terracotta pot that the wine is kind of made in. So we're gonna be sampling that specific authentic Georgian wine to yeah. super pumped for and kind of exploring the ground. So let's go. Okay, so a little hack. Traditional Georgian wine is made with these bottles, or this is how it's bottled, where the more Western style 
is with these bottles, right? You can kind of tell by the top of the bottles, you can see the difference there. So these over here and these can be made with the same grape, but this is with the kind of clay pot and these are in, I think, stainless steel or some different processes, a bit more Western, so. And also, apparently, all Georgian traditional wine is dry wine, really interesting. Heading into so we're now in a bus approaching the Kresi Monastery. Okay, basically here's the deal. So you can either walk 30 minutes from the base up all the way hill. uphill to the top of the monastery. Which is super steep, by the way. Yeah. And we're already tired of walking. Okay, we're not doing that. Or you can pay three lari per person to take a bus up to the top, which is where we are now. So anyway, here's the point. This car comes, you know, from the left. Woman Stop. gets stops. Woman gets out of the car, points at the bus driver, starts yelling at him. The, the so upset. Yeah, and the bus driver rolls down the window and starts screaming at this woman. Like I've never, I don't know if I've ever heard someone yell so loudly and harshly at somebody. To the one that is, to someone who's right next to them. Yeah, and we were like, well, we, we now moved it back of the bus, but we were right in front of it. Like, yeah. oh my gosh, it's so loud. Crazy. Um, anyway, it was like five minutes and then rolled down the window and we're on our way now, but yeah, I don't know. There's this stereotype that Georgians are very hospitable, friendly people. To be totally honest so far, there's been some great Georgians we've met. Here in the country especially, we've we've yeah, encountered ha ha just like nicer with ones. Tbilisi, half have been great yeah. and half just seen like the most miserable people. Upset. Very upset. Yep, sad, upset, angry all the time. Not trying to like be negative or anything. Again, it's like a mix. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we're almost there. And as you can see, we have made it here to the top of Nekresi Monastery. Super peaceful, beautiful, and specifically the most beautiful view of the valley that I've seen so far today. Definitely, oh my gosh. Some of the most lush green land I've ever seen in my life. Like really, even like really similar kind of like Costa Rica and parts of Brazil that we've been really gorgeous and you have you know the birds chirping and the beautiful yeah. kind of ground so and, and there's something about the air here that feels so clean so like i don't know I, we we were just talking about that it reminds us of costa rica and yeah. the clean air that we were able to smell there and also just as the majority of places we've been in georgia there's no charge for you to enter not even anyone asking for donations or anything so aside from the optional bus ride only three lati it's completely free but if you are going to go inside the church then you need to cover your shoulders and knees for both men, men and, and women, women for sure and for women you need to cover your head so if you don't bring anything or if you're wearing shorts or anything they do have coverings here that you can just borrow to use it while you go in but man i love i love this so far but now let's see which church is more beautiful In just a 50 minute drive away from the monastery, we arrive at our last stop, which is Grammy's Archangel Complex. 
It is a medieval complex that consists of a church and a fortress that was built to be the capital of the kingdom of Cajete. So I actually had no idea when we first came here that this used to be a kingdom. Very cool to be able to see the capital. Yeah, and the inside of the church, which is kind of the main part of the complex, is very, very beautiful as well. Very similar to kind of the interior of the church of the monastery yeah. with kind of those old frescoes kind of deteriorating uh, along the walls, but super cool and beautiful. The best word that I can use to describe Kakheti so far is magical, really. Yes. like kingdoms, vineyards, the rolling mountains. hills, oh mountains, you know, cows and, and sheep. sheep in the distance. It's, oh man, it's, it's wow. It's perfect for a road trip for sure. Like there are those places wow. that you know you're gonna just delight in the views as you drive. That's sure. one of those. Yeah, and if you're planning on visiting Tbilisi in the capital, it's definitely worth, even if you take a day trip out and back to Tbilisi or come out this way, oh my gosh, definitely worth it. I think. I think I like it even more than Tbilisi, but it's a totally different vibe. Yeah, it's a definitely, definitely a different vibe. And now it's time to feast on some delicious Georgian cuisine. Oh my gosh, everything looks and smells amazing. amazing. So what we have first, Ali has some, what is this called? Bozbashi. Bozbashi, which is like this soup with beef and lamb. lamb. Yes, oh, looks amazing. Of course, got some more uh, assortment of local Georgian cheeses. Of course, there's cheese and wine, right? Uh, and Georgia's known for having some amazing cheese. Here, I have shik maruli, yeah. which is this chicken in garlic sauce. And uh, of course, so some more wine. wine. <laughs> Georgian, of course, only. From what we've seen from Georgian food so far, Zibilisi, as well as Kakheti, very unique and very, very different from anything I've seen. Yes. Um, and very, very diverse. So it's super interesting. And yeah, let's dig in. Final thoughts on Cajete. I go first? Okay. Yeah. Wow, I'm so, so glad that we came. It was different than I expected. In a few different ways, I'm not even sure what I expected, but it has been so beautiful. I've loved that we did a road trip out of this because the views are incredible, the air feels nice, especially now in the spring with the flowers. Love it, love it, love it. The different places we've been, I also loved. They are a little bit further from one another, so it was nicer. I, I would recommend perhaps spending like a couple of nights in the area so you can fully enjoy everything, but love it. I did not know that Georgia had that type of country. And one random note is that I felt so free in the country of Georgia, kind of like now we're literally <laughs> walking through like some vineyards on the, in the middle of a road and there's not really that fear or constraint that I feel in other places. I feel very free. People have been nice in general. We've had good and bad experiences, but the place itself, love it. What did you think? Yeah, no, I agree with pretty much everything. Honestly, it was above expectations. If it wasn't, yes. We'd be caught, totally honest here on this channel if it wasn't. Yes. But it was more beautiful. Like the mountains were bigger than I expected. I don't know, the vastness of the land. Yeah. Uh, really did enjoy Georgian wine. Like now it's actually one of my favorite wines. I liked it better than a lot of the wine that I tried like in Argentina or some other places. So yeah, yeah wine is really cool. Obviously I love the history. Yes. It's just so cool with the kind of the monasteries and churches as well. It's not just like, you know, like Napa Valley or in Argentina and South Africa. There's some of those yeah. beautiful newer buildings, but having that his history there as well is just, um, yeah, yeah, no, I did think, we were talking about this, we thought that it was going to be a little bit more medieval, like the old towns. Didn't feel like that as much, like maybe parts of Croatia that we went to, but still beautiful, very quaint. Now, it definitely feels like more of a summer destination because True. even now, like many places were so empty. That's a good point. Yeah, no, totally. I think it seems a lot of uh, pools in a lot of these vineyards and hotel that we were staying in and all these places yeah. uh, that obviously not really as warm enough to do yet. But one of the benefits is, yeah, there's a lot less people now during this time of year. 
and it says in the forecast that it should be like just dropping rain all the time. Yeah. It's been on and off like all day, but it's uh, overall been really great weather. Yeah, so it is a bit more peaceful here at the end of spring, but I think, yeah, definitely summer. And then obviously fall when you actually harvest, the colors start changing. I think might be the, especially the best time uh, to visit the Kakadi region. Yes. But regardless, it's still an amazing time. Super glad that we came. If you're coming to Tbilisi, 100% worth going out, even if you do kind of one day trip in and out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, really blown away so far by Georgia. But there's even more of this unique country to see. So let's go. Welcome to Kazbegi, the most northern region here in Georgia, right on the border of Russia. And today you're going to see a side of the world you may have never seen or even knew existed. Yes, I know we did. not Yeah, we did. <laughs> we're going to explore this together. And specifically what we're going to do is explore some of the nature here in Kazbegi, do some hiking and sightseeing. Obviously, you can already see some of the beauty right oh, all yeah. around our chateau here. Beautiful area right here in the capital city of Stepetsminda. I know we're excited and hope you are too. Now, time to explore. Hi, beautiful. We were on our way to the hike and we saw these little friends, oh my gosh. They're so cute. We're like, we have to stop. And they ran to us. Oh, they're so happy. Hello. <laughs> Look. Okay, so as we're driving up this mountain, I look off to the side and I see this very interesting stone. So we stop the car and get out. And what you see here is petrified wood. This used to be the trunk of what I'm sitting on of an ancient tree. And all this that you see behind me, these stones, this is all petrified wood. Just crazy. I've never seen it like this. Just literally off the side of the road. Um, super beautiful and just goes to show more of the rich not just like culture and human history here in georgia but of course the natural history that's here is just it's it's like a fairy tale land it's it's so cool we finally made it here to the trailhead of this i don't know if i call it a famous hike but it's a hike that we found on yeah. all trails <laughs> And it took us about, what, like 35 minutes, I think, from Stepitzminda to yeah. drive here. With, without stop. Without stopping. We, yeah. On the way, you're going to want to stop so much. Yeah. Because it's so beautiful, but I'm hoping the hike is even more beautiful. Yeah. So as you can see kind of behind us, this is the village of Juta, which is basically 15 houses, a hotel, and a church. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. So very small village. Right from the village, you kind of park in there, walk up this area here, yeah. and then... If this you is see the it. only sign that you can see, which yeah. is the Zeta camping sign. There's no other yeah. like trail here sort of thing. So pay attention. Yeah, and I think this is the start of the trail. We're not 100% sure, yeah, we'll find but it. I think if we just keep walking this direction, we're gonna see some more beautiful sights. So either way, let's go. so white especially when the sun hits it's almost like blinding a little bit and super smooth does it remind you of when we were in Fitzroy yeah especially this right ahead of us yeah that reminds me just like Fitzroy beautiful all right so we're following the trail right like this and then look like a giant pile of snow right in front of us so, I guess we'll <laughs> try to go around maybe? Yes. <laughs> so we almost made it to the end. Yeah. And literally like pretty much out of nowhere. I mean, it was pretty close, like from sunny, got a little bit gloomy and then just immediately started raining. And lightning. Like and lightning. Can... First time we've heard lightning today. Yeah. But 
it seems that here, maybe in this region, no, also in Tbilisi as well, in Georgia, it seems like weather super, rain, oh. sunny, rain, yes. sunny. So literally right now it's like we're caught in the middle of a rainstorm, but literally it could be in like 10 minutes super sunny. Yeah, so, that's the thing. Sometimes we yeah. like look at the weather, like he said here or in Tbilisi and it says rainy day, but it's usually maybe just a few minutes or a yeah. couple hours of the day and then they get sunny. So yeah, that's what we're hoping. Definitely, yeah, unpredictable. But with that being said, oh my gosh, so gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful like, like the spread of the mountains, like right behind. It looks like we're so close to it. Like it looks yeah. Feel, huge. Feels like we're in Lord of the Rings. Yeah, it About does. to deliver the ring. So the end of the hike is a lake over there somewhere. And in between us and the lake is obviously this river. And we're trying to figure out exactly where to cross because I don't know, it's pretty intense, I think, from all the rain. We're gonna give it a shot. <laughs> Careful, oh my gosh. Good. We've officially made it here to the end of the hike. Yes. So the whole point of this hike, or the end destination, was the lake <clears> that you see over there. That is not a lake. So underwhelming, it's like a puddle. It's like a small, it's not even a pond. It's a small pond. It's probably the most pathetic lake I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah. but, but the hike was incredible, yeah. One of the best hikes, one of the top two, mm -hmm. I would say, hikes we've ever yeah. done in Definitely. our lives. Honestly, one of the best hikes. Uh, really, really good, peaceful, great, overall great weather, minus some of the mm -hmm. hail and rain. Obviously beautiful, um, and a lot of it's really untouched just because this is such a less known tourist destination. Yeah. I've never seen actually fewer people on a trail, that's an actual designated trail, you know, not going in a random wilderness. Yeah. But. And I did not expect I loved it. to be so close at the foot of the, yeah. is there a name? Is that? I, that don't even th I don't even know if this does have a name. I haven't found it at all. I don't know, but we'll, it's, we'll name it's, it. It's just like Fitzroy, Fitzroy 2.0. Exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah, this the, probably one of the most iconic mountains on Earth. Yeah. Honestly, very similar. Like, yeah. really, like looking at it, it's crazy, but Beautiful. definitely worth it. Definitely yes. worth it. And it is all uphill one way. So I'm glad kind of the way back down, yeah. it's, it's hopefully going to be a little bit easier. Yeah, there was some altitude. I mean, it wasn't yeah. nearly as bad as our hikes in, in Peru. Peru. Jeez, those we would do like five steps and, and we were like tired. And pass out, want to throw up. No, yeah. this was, there is a bit of altitude here. Like uh, how many feet? Like 10,000 10, feet? Yeah, I 3, think 3,000 so. meters, something like that. We'll have it here on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> but all in all, worth it, beautiful, clean. Yes. Oh all, great experience, period. Um, so yeah, it's been great so far. Feeling a little bit tired. But we still got more to see. So let's go. Welcome to Russia. Well, almost right here at the Russia-Georgia border and literally right on the other side of those mountains is Russia. So you could literally walk across. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, literally, I don't oh, know. Oh, you definitely could. It'd be a tough walk though. <laughs> yes. But you could do it. Uh, and obviously we're also here. See this beautiful mural? This is the, what is it called? The, the Russia-Georgia Friendship Monument. Yeah, but actually the whole story of this monument was a little bit ironic. In 1783, when there was a treaty between Georgia and Russia, and Russia agreed to protect Georgia from like attacks and all that, and they were gonna be friends. Um, however, just a few years later, the Persians were coming to attack Georgia and Russia didn't do anything. So fast forward 200 years, during the Soviet Union, they decided to build this monument to celebrate that treaty. I'm sorry, what? The yeah, so that the treaty that was broke. made and immediately <laughs> broken, they built this monument, it was like 200 years, 
in my view, I think kind of the try to cover up is my guess because it was yeah. built during the USSR, but it doesn't matter, it doesn't right? Matter. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, yeah, it's right here on the old military road as well. So yeah. great stop. Yeah, so on your way up into the Kazbegi region to Juta or Stepansminda, it's a good chance you're just naturally going to stop by. So definitely worth stopping by either on your way in or out. Really cool and obviously, as you've seen already, beautiful mountainscapes all around. Welcome to day number four. Our first stop is right here at Gergeri Trinity Church, the most iconic church in all of Georgia. If you Google Georgia right now, you're probably gonna see a photo of it. And it's so beautiful to be surrounded by the Caucasus Mountains. Honestly, I didn't expect it to be so close to it. And I didn't expect it to be so like, 360. Yeah, yeah, you literally have like snow-capped mountains. All I can kind of see you, with yeah. the GoPro, but like all around us on all sides. Yeah. Yeah. Super. So it's like guaranteed a beautiful view. Yeah. Oh, and, and something else to keep in mind. So we're here in, what month is it? May. A end toward of the May. end of May. End of May. That's right. Which is actually the rainiest month here in the Kazbegi region as yeah. well as Georgia as a whole. But with that rain, you get a lot more of that lush green with snow still on the mountains where you yes. get more into like July and August apparently more of the snow starts melting. So something to kind of keep in mind as well. There are different ways that you can get to this point. There is a very convenient road that comes right up to it. You can park yeah. and yeah, yeah. You, can you can park and you can see it right at the base of the church and then just yeah. walk up. So some people hike all the way up. I definitely wouldn't. Oh yeah. my gosh, it's like a 12 minute drive. So yes. the hiking would be crazy. Love it. So we're excited to continue to explore Stepansminda. So on to the next destination. This episode of Survivor, just a 20 minute drive and 30 minute hike. We are here at Gavretti? Gavletti? Gavletti <laughs> Waterfall. Sorry. Big Waterfall. Gavletti Big Waterfall. Yeah. And it is big and it is Gavletti. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> honestly, is yeah, this is the most lush green part of Stepansman that we've been thus far. Yeah. It is really beautiful, but as you can see already from the camera, it's super misty right yeah. by the waterfall. It's crazy and it gets really cold. Yeah. We were like super hot on the hike. Yeah. Then we got here and the hike like really I don't know if it's the altitude or what it is, but it's you a pretty get tough tired. hike. Yeah. Even for just like 30 it's minutes. It's not that easy. But yeah. anyways, there's the big and the small waterfall. The small you need to hike a little bit more. So we chose the big and the easier one. And yeah, well, you're hot it's coming in. And then you get here with the wind and the mist. Yeah, but it's a good place to cool off. Yeah. It's and it is beautiful. And like that water is so clean, like fresh mountain water. Oh my gosh. You kind of see over here. Beautiful. Definitely worth coming for sure. 100%, definitely. Now on to the next stop. So Ali and I are here at the giant headstones of snow, which are these like headstones um, that have been carved. So we got here and guess who we ran into? We just ran into the sculptor. He's the man who created all of these beautiful head sculptures. 
And, and we happen to be standing in front of his favorite yes. here, uh, Jesus, Yeshua. Made right from here. quartz. Yeah, beautiful stone, beautiful stone. Yeah, but all of this that you see is because of, uh, because yes. of him. Okay. Now he's showing us something else. I'm not really sure what, because we don't speak Georgian. Petrol. Oh, petrol. Temperature gross. Oh. Ah, to wash. And he does all of this for free by hand. Yes, and there's no like local support or anything. No, it's just, it's like George's land and yeah. he's allowed to come out here and obviously sculpt, which is really beautiful. It's really, really cool, but there's like nine or 10. There's not yeah. a lot. Yeah, his goal is to do 500 <laughs> of these. There's like 10 now. It yeah, was like so 500, so. Maybe he's, he's been working faster lately, I don't know. But yeah. if you want to support him, there's a little support box. Yeah, right over here. Right over there that you can donate as well to help. Yeah. Um, but yeah, very cool. Very, very cool. cool. It's been an awesome day so far. So magical here. Welcome to Spanetti and destination number four on our road trip through Georgia. Yeah. And specifically, we're here in the historic medieval mountain village of Mestia, as you can see, for miles here in the Caucasus Mountains, we have, what are these called? Koshkebis. Koshkebis, which are these medieval watchtowers that were built yeah. that still remain. Yeah, they were built like in the eighth century. Like, so they're really old. Ali's feeling a bit under the weather today. So for this adventure, I'll be doing most of the talking, <laughs> but should be exciting. Let's go. This is cool. So we're here in the Margiani house, which is one of the wealthiest clans that lived here for hundreds of years in what is now Mestia. And all of the structure and furniture you see here is from the 1200s. What's really cool, we see all these areas down here on all three sides. This was for cows. The entire house was heated by cows, not by fire, which is really neat. Of course they had a fire to cook, but the humans slept on top to stay warm and the cows below and to combat the smell of the cows, which obviously would get pretty stinky, they would actually burn a local wood here that gives off this fragrant aroma, and they would burn it right here in this kind of little area to help kind of combat those odors, but extremely beautiful, ornate, so cool to see. And the Marjani family lived here up until the 1800s, right? So somewhat recently, and now it's owned by the government, it's a museum, but really, really cool, definitely worth stopping by. And what's really neat is there's actually a secret tunnel that leads to the family's guard tower. So let's go check it out. bit scary yeah but we're here on the Mestia ski lift because Mestia is actually I guess a popular ski destination and kind of winter destination but the ski lift also works here in the summer as, as we can already see some really beautiful views it was crazy uh, as soon as we got our ticket which was like uh, 20 gel each and as soon as we scanned in the guy's just like oh I'll sit on that we sat down and we started going up he's like pull 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 we're like what and pulled this thing down but uh, yeah. I don't even kind of see it's like we had to like yeah. strap ourselves. Yeah, it doesn't feel the safest, <laughs> but it is beautiful. So <laughs> yeah. uh, this should be leading us to maybe the most beautiful viewpoint in Mestia. So let's find out. As you can see, we have made it to the top of the ski lift and have to say it's definitely is worth it. Yes. It, if it wasn't, we would totally say it, but the reason is because when you're in the village of Mestia in the valley, you can't really see the snow-capped mountains around. Some, but, you can see some, but yeah, no. Yeah, very few. Up here you can see way more, like you see kind of behind us. So super beautiful. So instead of like hiking for hours and hours and hours, yeah. you just take the ski lift for like $8 per person in USD. And you can see there's also a little kind of like ski lodge, restaurant behind us, but Really chill, beautiful place. Uh, nice to just kind of like relax for a little bit, taking the scenery. So we're gonna do that and then head to our next destination.
about an hour and a half drive from Mestia. We are now here in the highest village in all of Georgia, which is the village of Ushkali. And basically, I think Ushkali is like a collection of these little medieval villages together, isn't it? Yeah, it is similar it's to Mestia, but it's much more beautiful and much older as well. Yeah, you can de like there's on the way a series of these beautiful villages. Uh, Definitely already. We just got started and it's more beautiful than Mestia. So 100% super excited that we're here. Now, it's also a lot more like secluded. It, it, you can barely drive through everything. So you need to walk. Yeah, we have to park at the edge and then walk in. I almost wrecked our rental car by yeah. going in a little bit too deep. So I had to like reverse all the way back out. And what we ended up doing, because we didn't go with the tour, is we actually got a rental car in Kutaisi, drove up to Mestia, which was about five hours, you know, stayed the night, obviously, woke up, spent some time there, came to Ushkuli, and we plan to go back to Mestia again tonight. Um, so that seems what a lot of other travelers do as well. Yeah, Mestia has a lot more options for accommodations, and it's easier. Getting with like big luggage, walking through, yeah. you know, here. Uh, we're just gonna enjoy the village, get some beautiful views, and share everything with you. So let's go. want good food, stay in Mestia. We're here at one of like the apparently top two restaurants in the small village of Ushkuli, specifically at Cafe Lemmy. They have a small menu. So we walk inside, there's basically a little cottage. We're like, oh, could we have this, this, and this? They're like, uh, great, half the things on our menu are out. Uh, so we only have very, very few options, but we're in luck because uh, we got what Ali and I really wanted here in Spinetti, which is the regional dish called Kubdari, which is this stuffed meat pastry, similar to kachapuri. Also, we have some kebabi, which is the regional dish of Kutaisi, where we just came from. Of course, also some cucumber and tomato salad. And to drink, I have this tarragon lemonade. So tarragon is this herb here in Georgia that is used in all kinds of cuisines and drinks that we've noticed since Tbilisi. Not really sure where the green color comes from, but cheers and let's enjoy the view and this food. To Batumi. Batumi, also known as the Vegas of the Black Sea. But instead of gambling our life savings away, yeah. we are going to be exploring this very interesting part of Georgia and also our last stop on our road trip through this magical country. Yes. It's been it's been so <laughs> great. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this is our last stop. And so far, I will say it already looks so unique yeah. and different from every other stop we've we've had in oh for georgia. sure definitely not what you picture when you think of the country of georgia but yeah. that's just why we're so excited today we're going to be exploring the city and surrounding areas giving your honest first impressions of batumi is it worth visiting what is it like let's explore right here at Europe Square and honestly just being here alone you can kind of get a taste of Batumi in general because there's so many different architectural styles just surrounding this square yeah. very beautiful super peaceful now in the morning and just across the street there's also one of the few astronomical clocks in the world and if you saw our Prague vlog yeah like two weeks ago two weeks ago we saw the astronomical <laughs> clock in Prague and then we're seeing this one again yeah one of the few and we already saw it too so, so you could let us know in the comments which one you think is more beautiful yeah so 
Super excited to explore more of Batumi. And next, we're gonna check out the Batumi Cathedral. So let's go. We came here to Lovita Cafe, which has a super unique vibe. It's all pink, filled with these beautiful decors. And what we got to eat was, first and foremost, our favorite Georgian dessert, Sidniki, which we tried for the first time in Tbilisi. We also got some eggs, mushrooms, buckwheat, some shakshuka, but it does look very different, and of course, some very pretty drink, so let's dig in. Oh my gosh, look how creamy it is. Can you see that? So that's like cottage cheese inside and they're like deep fried. Wow, all right, let's go. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh, it's so perfect. Definitely my favorite dessert. This is the best Sirniki we've had in Georgia. Like I said, almost like a donut. It's not too heavy, still a little bit light. That perfect balance. Sweet, but not too sweet. It's like my perfect dessert. Oh my gosh, I love Sirniki. And right now we're at the seafront promenade, which is like this way that goes for about seven kilometers yeah. along the sea. So obviously you can walk to take in the views, you can rent bikes, or you can also rent electric scooters. <laughs> and if you're not new here, you know that that is our very favorite mode of transportation. For sure. Best. <laughs> yeah, so that's what we're gonna do to get to our next destination. So let's go. Let's go. and I don't usually go to McDonald's, yeah, not ever. even in the US, <laughs> but today, of course, we had to make an exception because what you see behind us is McDonald's. Mm -hmm. I know it looks like this weird kind of structure with a watery moat around it, but it's just really cool, not just McDonald's in Batumi, but yeah. overall structure and it's super packed and popular. Yeah, but it's really cool inside as well. And if you go all the way up, there's yeah. like this garden. Yeah, they have a garden inside. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even know how to describe it, like a, almost like a spaceship or something. Get really, really neat. And that's clearly consistent here in Batumi. Yes. Is the inconsistent architecture, like all types. The modern, almost like Latin colonial, something you would see in Mexico or Brazil yeah. or Yeah, you Spain. know, like Batumi is known as the Vegas of the Black Sea, yeah. but it gives off so many different vibes. Like sometimes I feel like I'm in Miami or Brazil yeah. or parts of Europe like Spain or even Prague. It's like yeah. so eclectic. And a testament to the different architecture too is just, you can see that buildings, even like um, hotel chains go out of their way yeah. to make their buildings very unique to go with the vibe of Batumi, which is yeah. super cool. I think it's just a very, it's definitely a lot of development happening here in the area yeah. that we've seen like a bunch of construction and definitely a fast growing area here in Georgia. Yeah. But yeah, super, it looks like just kind of artistic and free range when it comes to a lot of the new structures and buildings, but yes. really cool vibe overall. Yeah, really interesting. I'm loving the vibe so far, Batumi is Really so, great. Yeah, so far, I think it's my favorite in Georgia thus my, far. Mine so too, let's yeah. Let's see if that continues. We've had enough of Georgia, Done. and that's why we're here in Turkey. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We're not sick of Georgia, and we're not in Turkey, but we're only five steps away from the Georgia-Turkey border. Yeah. We're here about 30 minute drive outside Batumi, at Sarpi Beach, which has right on the border, which is super cool. Yeah. You see uh, this beautiful mosque and the Turkish flag over on that side. And over on this side, we have the 
Georgian and EU flag and a Georgian Orthodox Church. Yeah, but being this close to Turkey is bringing all the feelings yes. from our first adventures in Hobart's abroad. So actually, if you've been with us since Turkey, comment below because we're super interested to know. Yeah, Turkey still is one of our favorite countries. Yes. And we'll let you know later how it compares with Georgia. Yeah. But the reason we're here isn't for the border. Yeah. It's actually for the beach because Sarpi Beach is one of the, if not the number one top beach in the Batumi area, known for obviously the beautiful views and cliff jumping, which we're really excited for yeah. and we'll do in a little bit. So we'll just kind of relax here on the beach, escape the city. And so let's dive in. It looks way further from up here, but we're gonna do it. in Georgia, we decided to pig out on this Georgian feast and order our favorite Georgian cuisine that we've kind of experimented with over our time here in the country. So first, what we have is this kind of Georgian chicken soup. So we have chicken, egg, garlic, smells amazing, accompanied with warm Georgian bread, Georgia being one of the first places on earth that bread was even created, which is insane. So of course, you have to have amazing bread. Of course, kachapuri. This is kind of this bread dish with egg and butter, extremely comforting, rich, and delicious. I got some uh, local mushroom soup and shek moruli, which is more kind of chicken in this garlic cream sauce. Everything smells amazing. Starting with the kachapuri, Here's the way that we were taught to eat this. So you start from the out and then work your way in. So we kind of take one of these ends here. To start, just a piece of bread. We stick it here in the egg, kind of break it up, and then break that barrier of that kind of coagulated top and mix together. And this is crazy though. This is deeper than any kachapori we've had. Look how deep it goes. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. It's gonna be so good. Yeah, so you just get a good mixing in. Get a good amount on that bread. Oh gosh, I'm so excited, guys. All right, still warm. Here we go. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh. I know it's not good for me, but it's so good. This is like perfect, in my opinion, after a long day of like hiking or walking, just so comforting. This might put me right to sleep though, but amazing. For me, I don't know about you, Lynn, but Batumi is my favorite place in Absolutely. Georgia, period. Yes. Like if I was gonna live in Georgia, this is where I would choose to live as like, you know, as a digital nomad, this is yeah. but very it, nice. It, but it also definitely has super vacation vibes oh, too. Yeah. So like if I mean, most Coastal people. is your thing, you're definitely going to love Batumi. And it's funny, like towards the end of the day, I was looking at all those lights um, he, like in downtown Batumi and the word yeah. that came to my mind was also magical which is funny because yeah. it is so different from the other parts of Georgia that we've yeah, been because Georgia is kind of known for tradition traditional yes. food traditional music traditional the, uh, religion architecture architecture and, yeah yeah and this was like a different Modern. type of magical it definitely reminded me of Vegas and you know that lively sort of like nightlife yeah. but oh my gosh I'm so glad we came to Batumi my favorite it's beautiful for sure food both times like just choosing restaurants were great yeah two of the best restaurants we've had in Georgia in happened Georgia. to just be yes. here that we chose 
Uh, yeah. Love the sea and kind of the sea vibe. I think it changes the culture a little bit when you're by the water. Yeah, the weather felt amazing. Really artistic too, all the architecture just yes. with their experimenting, so. Yeah, it seemed like people were very creative here. Yeah, and it's definitely fast growing, so I'm super curious to see where Batumi goes, but yes. for us, you know, on, honest kind of first impression, honest review, Yes. 10 out of 10, Batumi amazing. is great. We really- If you're coming to Georgia, definitely yeah. come here, and yes. yeah, or if it's not already on your bucket list, consider adding it because yeah, it's yes. definitely worth it. And if you're into mountains, there's definitely some amazing mountains here. The yes. Caucasus Mountains are right on par with the Alps uh, and with Patagonia and Argentina and Chile. Yeah, and, and yeah. honestly, wow. this was a road trip of a lifetime. So stay tuned wow. for a summary of a road trip if you're interested yeah. in doing the we'll same thing. We'll be linking thing. all of that in the description section, comment section of this video. Yes. And as always, honestly loved having you along this adventure and hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe and check out our other adventures for more. Yes. God bless you and your travels. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, bye. bye. 